We have more statistical data out here for Yu-Gi-Oh! and actually the TCG market as a whole. Buckle up, somebody's going to complain about these statistics, but this is raw number and data. This is the kind of stuff that I love seeing. So, this is all from Twitter. I'll leave a link down below. We've Google translated everything for you, and you should smash love and crap out of the subscribe button. So the next time somebody tells you, well, Yu-Gi-Oh is dying, be like, no, nope, no, it's not. TCG industry information based on media create data. This time we were introduced the cumulative data of April, May, and June, all right? If you look at the data for one month, TCGs have not released new products, may seem to be lackluster. But if you look at the data for three months, there is less fluctuation and you can see momentum quite accurately. So the entire TCG industry for 2023 uh, was 68.1 and the entirety of this year is 75.3 billion. Um, that's a 110.6% increase across your TCG media platform. Okay, cumulative growth over the past three months is 10%. It's a solid performance. However, June is quite an ominous month. If you took a look at June alone, the uh, this year's figures is 89.4 of last June's, probably for the first time in several years, but that is lower than last year's. By the way, the sales of the fiscal 2023 year was expected to increase about 35% total compared to 2022. So you could see that the TCG market has been growing quite rapidly over the past few years, but now it's starting to level off. That is a very important thing. You know, you know that free COVID money doesn't exist out here when you're looking at things. So that's very, very critically important for you to understand is, you know, there's people have to return back. People have vacations they're planning for. You know, you're not getting that free crazy handouts that you were years ago with the, the, the stupid money, quote unquote. So. These numbers for the three month block are quite interesting to me at least. So the Pokemon card game had 33 billion and it was 30.8 last year. So that's a 106.07, um, 6% increase basically, which okay, I mean, seems good to me. Yu-Gi-Oh! This year, 11.9 versus last year's 9.3. That's a 127. 0.76% contrast. So uh, Yu-Gi-Oh's numbers, you know, you got to remember, uh, we just, the, the OCG just pumped out Rage of the Abyss in this last three-month block. Um, that seems like a pretty big set out here. Full War, so even on the TCG side of things, is going to impact. And you can tell there is growth out here. They, they're making money. They know what they're doing. All right. Meanwhile, over here in the TCG, everybody's like, game's dying. No, no, it's it's not. All right. Duel Masters, 8.3 this year to 7.2 last year, up 115.23. Okay. One Piece. Now, this is actually quite interesting to me. This year was 5.9 to year, uh, last year's 5.6 billion. It's only a 5.5% increase, but... I will say that it does prove that Bandai is still holding together those numbers very strongly for One Piece. Um, and I'm going to be curious to see, you know, how maybe the reprint block and things will come up here in the future. Uh, why Schwarz actually is down. They had 3.1 billion this year versus 4.9 billion last year. That's a huge, interesting uh, deficit, actually, at the 64%. Uh, it might just be the time frame and releases that they had, because Weiss is very, very interestingly driven based on, you know, timetables and things and sets. So that one, I'm not too worried about. Dragon Ball Super, Bandai, 2 billion with no data last year. This would be your new Dragon Ball Super card game. Seeing the two billion, I'm not that surprised. Magic the Gathering, 1.5 billion to last year's 1.6 billion. You're only you're only a fraction of the way off. 96.63. Hey Magic's not dead. That's good. Dream Order, which is a baseball game, uh, just came out. 1.3 billion units actually, which is kind of surprising with no data from last year. And then Yu-Gi-Oh! Rush Duel. Now this this statistic is crazy. We had 1.2 billion in the last three months, all right, 
versus 650 million last year. That's an 86.56 increase. That's nearly almost double the uh, the sales figures out here. That's insane. Like, really? Detective Conan. This is a Takara Tomy game. I don't know how many Detective Conan TCGs there have been, but 1.2 billion. Uh, not too bad, actually. No sales data, because, you know, new game. Vanguard, 1. Point, or, uh, yeah, 1 billion versus the 940 billion from last year. So we're actually up a little bit. That's good. Union Arena, 670 million to the 1.2 billion from last year. That's that's down. That's bad. Battle Spirits, same thing, actually. This is bad. Uh, 670 million versus 1.2 billion last year. Wow, okay. Shadowverse, 600 million versus 1.3 billion last year. Shadowverse is also down. Okay, Digimon actually bringing up the rear here for 380 million versus 220 million. So Digimon's actually up as well. Okay. So preface down here, currently sales in the TCG industry can be broadly divided into four categories. The first one is regular product. The next is going to be single original packs and further the high value and secondary market. Now shifting on over here, uh, this is this is where things I think get kind of interesting. So, and for the market resource, so different people focus on different markets. So, for example, someone who's paying very close attention to the market for high-priced Yu-Gi-Oh singles might see that Yu-Gi-Oh is outdated. When you see scalpers failing, it makes you wonder: Is this TCG's popularity declining? That's an insane thing to see here, because you're looking at these, this specifically here, however, the actual Yu-Gi-Oh! product is performing extremely well, far exceeding last year's figures. I would encourage everyone to look at the data when asking themselves which of these five perspectives am I focusing on, and am I seeing things in a balanced way? That is beautiful. That is the craziest thing that you could hear. If you are so narrow focused on a market out here, and you are seeing, you know, oh my gosh, you know, things, you know, it's high price Yu-Gi-Oh cards are declining, but product is still performing. That is crazy to hear. That is something everybody needs to hear out here. Now, on a note here for Pokemon, Pokemon cards have also been growing suddenly for the past few years, showing unpresented growth of 600,000 compared to last year's, but now the growth has finally slowed down. However, the situation has merely slowed down, and it is amazing that the number one trading card game is still growing. Also, Pokemon cards are usually very popular in the end of the year, so I have expectations from the end of the year. To be honest, the biggest drivers of Pokemon card sales have been resales, high-value trading cards, and original packs, although sales on Onapa is also not to be declined, blah, blah, blah. Uh, this may also be due to the different uh, perceptions and so forth for online communities. Yu-Gi-Oh! Oh, we got more Yu-Gi-Oh! down here. It's a wonderful growth. A pre-built deck was released that contained many rare cards that were highly desired. Also, many expensive cards that were basic parts of the deck. So there were many people who said, I played Master Duel, but I couldn't get my hands on the real things. The momentum suddenly started playing paper TCGs. It worked. This acted as a catalyst, and it seems that people have been holding away and away, and now are thinking, let's give it a shot. A long time ago, when Mirror Force was first included in the Yu-Gi-Oh! starter decks, many players joined in saying, now I can build a decent deck. Uh, they don't hand that out what they actually need, leaving thus the opportunity to actually get this. Duel Masters. The heyday of, Master, uh, of Duel Masters was just before the coronavirus, when the so-called CS was booming and the game's popularity in the competitive TCG grew. It was at its peak and it's about time the enthusiasm to be regained, but the most important thing for that to happen is the game environment itself is fun. This is something to watch out for the future of Duel Masters. Originally, Duel Masters was a trading card game that attracted a large number of new elementary school students every year, but the market it is being eroded by Pokemon and One Piece. That's kind of interesting to actually, you know, hear that a market is actually eroding because of other things in the space. Now, we got more here. The key to success is creating an environment, and only the original Duel Masters fans would like the game-like game to be. Okay, so One Piece. 
it's going strong. I have a feeling that there, this will be no surprise if it grew even more, but Bandai seems to be limiting the number of cards produced so the value doesn't plummet. Okay, that's pretty good. The lack of cards means the single cards and high value singles will be priced accordingly. This means that if the singles become a business, the number of stores selling it will increase. Realistically, if you were to open a TCG shop now, Duel Masters and Yu-Gi-Oh have too many past cards and assets. So starting out, a huge effort would be, you know, Pokemon, One Piece, things like that to open a shop. Uh, that's very interesting advice for the OCG side of things down here. Dragon Ball, the first series sold explosively, which it did, but it cannot be denied that the gambling and competitive element of winning the tournament meant the game was popular and that calmed down. The game used to, uh, game seems to have dwindled to have a solid foundation, so it's likely to continue to sell normally in the future. Uh, did I fail to reach the status of the One Piece game? I mean, it might have, actually. Dream Order is a baseball TCG. We talked about that at the beginning. It may not have generated as much among TCG users, but surprisingly, it's ranked 8th and is selling quite well. Detective Conan. I think that this is the fourth and fifth time that there's been a Conan TCG made, but it's still a popular content have created 1.2 billion yen market. Uh, it may be the anime's good specialty stores are selling better than TCG shops. That seems uh, to be the case. I hope the... Uh, this continues to be a TCG that sells well in the future. There are also high rarity autograph cards, but if they start including autograph cards of voice actors, that'd be a big deal. Well, everyone, the hot days continue. If you go to a TCG shop, please make sure you drink plenty of water, but there's your statistics. Interesting stuff, and stuff about Yu-Gi-Oh is insane. So please, leave a comment down below, tell me what you guys think, and I'll see your beautiful faces back here in you guys. Peace out. Patrons, thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Check out these other videos.